Okay, checking one, two, three, four, five. We're going on live just a little bit early on Periscope and Twitter to see what's going on for this evening and make certain that we've got a signal coming through and make certain everything else is working at this time. So pardon the blather. I want to make certain that everybody knows exactly what's happening here. I want to keep you updated as to what's going on in and around the Mid-South where it comes to the forecast update. We'll have that coming up here in just a little while. If you are just joining us, feel free to drop any questions about the Mid-South forecast into the comments section. We'll get to those coming up here in just a little bit. Things are again relatively quiet for now. Could be a little bit more of an active finish as we go into the rest of the evening. We'll talk more about that coming up here as as well got a lot of astronomy to take a look at and also again some uh, da more dangers down into the tropics pars partially over the course of the next couple of days but again once again we'll take a look at that coming up here in just a little while for those of you joining us on uh, at this point in time I'm going to switch over to uh, Facebook now and give people an idea as to what's going on for those of you who have been here with uh, Periscope and Twitter for about the last few minutes looks like our signal is relatively stable no extra tinfoil needed for the the receptors so good news on that and welcoming everybody who's just joining us now live on my Facebook page thanks a lot for joining us there so the triple threat working for tonight keeping you updated as to what's going on decent strong signal going out of here at this time questions about the forecast we'd love to answer them for you if you have any ideas about what's going on with weather in your location please drop them into the comments section below again we'd love to know a little bit more about what's going on in your particular area and show you a little bit more about what's happening here in the Mid-South. Again, pretty quiet for right now, but we do still seem to have the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms out across much of the area. We'll continue with that coming up here in just a little bit. Sorry, I've got a dog that wants my attention down here, but won't share the chew toy with me. So, see, neat little thing, in case you haven't seen anything about this, old sock water bottle tie a knot in it and this thing right here better than a lot of chew toys that you could possibly get at the pet store but don't let that stop you from going to the pet store to see what's going on there where were we weather right okay first of all Welcome to the show. More information about things, austin.onicwrg.com. Forecast in the blue bar, social media in the red bar over there, up there, and also over here, wrg.com slash weather. Questions about the forecast, again, drop them into the area. We'll talk into the comments section. We'll let you know more about that. Looks like everybody's caught up pretty well at this point in time. We'll get to radar in just a second. We want to go a little bit closer to uh, upstairs for just a little bit. Uh, if you've got a a good view of the sky up into the area of northwest to northeast in about 10 well about eight minutes from now at about 840 international space station will be rising about 838 call it about six to seven minutes it'll be rising along the northwest horizon and going toward the northeast almost exactly where it was about last night but just a little bit earlier so if you'd like to go out and see the international space station and you have a clear view of the northern horizon this goes overhead in in just about six minutes or so. Uh, bright point of light should be pretty decently bright this time around. Uh, look for that in and around the area of the northwest to the northeast and you should be able to see, sorry about the sparkle pattern on the uh, activity there for right now. Uh, so far at this point we see again the possibility of getting again some fairly clear skies but unfortunately we have the full moon which could interfere with the viewing of the Perseid meteor shower. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little while. Let's go back to radar right around Bethel Springs. We still have some showers popping up. Doesn't really look like much at this time but we do still have a little bit more activity uh, in and around the area of Bethel Springs so far. This is again the uh, heaviest activity we've picked up throughout the course of the evening hours and it's going to continue again to see uh, more chances of showers out there off and on throughout the evening mainly across west Tennessee as we're seeing again the areas from showers taking place out there just north of the Mississippi state line did up a few scattered showers south of us and continuing to see some of that activity down to around Verona uh, right around Aberdeen and south of uh, the Houston area in Mississippi, but most of the activity right now continuing into around the uh, southwestern parts of the viewing area in and around areas of southwest Tennessee there, right around Henderson. And if I get my screen to focus, I think I've got a dirty lens here. i got to get that cleaned up at some point in time. There we go, a little bit better. Focus on the camera there. Still not working. Apologies for that. Uh, West Memphis, Becky Cody Donaldson, thanks for joining us. Donna Kelsey Faulkner, I think the sound's turned up. 
I could shout, but don't want to be impolite, so hopefully everything is uh, easier to hear at this point in time. I'll see if I can increase the uh, sound out there for right now. So far, again, we're looking again at pretty quiet conditions across much of the area, so much of what we're seeing right now is just plain rainfall, and so far that's about all that we have to take a look at at this point. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on out throughout the rest of the area. Again, we just told you about the uh, International Space Station flying overhead. Uh, that'll be happening in the next few minutes or so. Let's take a look and see what's going on with Sunset tonight. If you'd like to see more of our various webcams, that's available at wreg.com slash webcams. Great views from around the Mid-South. Just a little bit of cloud cover out across much of the area, but otherwise not doing too bad for this evening. So not seeing too many uh, major amounts of clouds to block out all the sunset. And that means should be good viewing for the International Space Station. Two passes of the ISS tonight. And we'll tell you a little bit more about that coming up here in just a little while. There was an earthquake this morning. It was in and around the area of Ripley and Covington, Tennessee the early this morning at about 4.23 or so. It was about a 2.1 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me see if I can bring that back down. 2.0 as it's been uh, called for right now. Again, that was just right around the area of Ripley and Covington. Uh, fairly close again to the area around just to the due east of the Osceola area, southwest of Ripley. And that was, again, something that probably was not felt in many areas, right around Henning, a little bit of that. And again, that was a 2.0. One of the biggest ones that we've seen and heard uh, about this point in time for the last couple of days and weeks. So if you felt this, the United States Geological Survey would like to know about it. You can go to their Did You Feel It page. So far, there's nothing on there about that. That, but if you did feel this, uh, a lot of people apparently did not, so that's fairly good news at this point. Lightning at this time, nothing showing up in and around the Mid-South area. A lot of lightning strikes down to our south and into and around portions of the Gulf Coast states, but once again, not a lot where we are. That could be changing in the near future. This courtesy of Lightning Maps, one word, lightningmaps.org, lightning around the world. Uh, also run by the website Blitz or Tongue. If you've ever been there, it's a great place to go to to see how the lightning strikes are doing in and around the country and the world. A lot of smoke in the Pacific Northwest, a lot of problems out that direction for, again, visibility problems, and people who have asthma could be a lot of problems out that direction for a lot of people going on. But so far, none of that is making its way uh, into the Mid-South area, so good news on that for all of us around here. We do still have, again, some fairly heavy rainfall down to around uh, areas of the Gulf Coast, and that's where the green shaded counties are located down just to the south of the News Channel 3 viewing area, uh, just north of Jackson, back towards southeast Arkansas and into northwestern and western middle areas of Alabama. That's where we're seeing some of the heaviest rainfall coming on through uh, at this time. Weather Prediction Center, again, what we're going to be looking for into the next couple of days. Excuse me, my bifocal's not working well for tonight. New cold front arriving back to the north. That's going to up the chances of showers and thunderstorms. And unfortunately, that means right on into the weekend, we could be looking at some more activity coming on through. And that's something that we may have to look out for again into the hours of the weekend. If you have any plans for outdoors, want to think about keeping those plans, but be ready to seek shelter indoors again. Remember, we've had 11 fatalities from lightning strikes this year across the country. Nothing you want to be messing around with. Get everybody back indoors again. Don't be that person who's like, oh, nothing will happen, and something does happen. You know, it's something you try, want to try to avoid. It seems like a, a small thing, and the lifeguards at the pool, they're not trying to annoy you. They're trying to save your life. So if you want to stay safe, listen to them, get out of the pool, stay inside until the last lightning strike has been uh, seen. Time it out 30 minutes after that. Call it the 30-30 rule. Wait 30 minutes for the storm to move 30 miles away, and that'll give you a margin of safety because lightning can strike 20 miles or more away from the parent thunderstorm, and you want to be away from that as much as possible. Currently not seeing a lot of much of any problems out there. National Weather Service in Memphis is showing the possibility of a few strong thunderstorms on Friday where that cold front moves in and just kind of settles in over the area and does a pretty good job of sticking around. So what are we looking at? Again, for later on tonight, we've got some pretty quiet conditions for right now across much of the area. Low temperatures tonight back in the upper 60s to lower 
70s. Gloria Davis, Ashland, Mississippi included in there with temperatures back in the lower 70s for lows. Chances of rainfall, 20% into the overnight hours, so we're not looking at a lot of activity, but still possible. Another warm day coming up for tomorrow, a little bit warmer, in fact. Temperatures back into the mid to upper 80s for high temperatures. And chances of rain starting to get a little bit farther north of I-40 from what we've seen over the last couple of days. So that could be just a bit of a problem out there for outdoor activities. Low temperatures Thursday night, not that low, lower to mid 70s across much of the Mid-South area. And that chance of rainfall will stick around Thursday night into Friday. High temperatures on Friday going back again into the mid to upper 80s. So pretty warm as we finish out the week and much better chances of showers and thunderstorms as we look for more potential of problems out there with more activity coming on through. Jumping ahead into Saturday, High temperatures across the Mid-South back in the upper 80s, pushing 90 in northern parts of Mississippi, and looking again at more chances of showers out there for both Saturday and skipping ahead to Sunday. Looks like even higher chances of rainfall as that front sticks around the area, so that's what we're going to be winding up with. Looks like 60% coverage chance plus for the better possibility of rainfall out across much of the Mid-South. Hopefully this is not what's going to be happening uh, with the eclipse. This is not good news for meteor shower watchers because this weekend is when the Perseid meteor shower will be peaking. So this again will not be good news. If you're going to be outdoors trying to catch any meteors out there, that would be nice. But unfortunately, it looks like the weather may not quite be agreeing with us. We still, again, right now it's a little too early to tell, but so far it's looking not good for the eclipse as we get closer toward next Monday. Next, next Monday, I should say. So but we will continue to monitor that, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3 again for more information on that. All right, down to the tropics. Not just one, not just two, but three systems now to take a look at. We've got Franklin, which is a hurricane, winds of uh, 85 miles per hour. It's still a strong Category 1 and about to slam into the east coast of Mexico. We've got our other storm system out into the uh, areas of the Atlantic. It doesn't look like much at this time, and so far it's still fairly dis organized. About a 20% chance of anything developing from this in the next uh, two days. In the next five days, the National Hurricane Center gives it a 50-50 shot of developing into something more dramatic, more strong, more organized. So this could also be a bit of a problem. And taking a look at something right over the Bahamas, disturbance number two, not strong enough for a name yet. This again could be a problem for travelers around the Bahamas, Florida, anything like that. So something to take a look at there. David Gibson, welcome from Ripley, Mississippi. Thanks for uh, stopping by for for tonight. Emma Milliorn, hope I'm saying that correctly, from Olive Branch here. And I believe I got Victoria Fondren in there. Quiet in Sarah, what's in store for us? And we'll take one more look at the forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Beautiful view of what it looked like. At least it was there a second ago. Let me see if I can get the satellite picture back to where it should have been. The view from the GOES satellite, preliminary non-operational data, showing again the storm making its way. Well, it was there. Apologies. Looks like we had a reset of the data for the last 24 hours, and now it's not currently there anymore. But there's plenty of satellite pictures to look at, so we'll take a look at that later. Apologies for that. What's going to be going on with Franklin? It's going to be going over the mountains of Mexico, basically on a due westerly course. And if it survives, it's going to be going just south of the Baja Peninsula. This could wind up being a problem for uh, shipping and cruise lines out into the eastern Pacific over the next couple of days. That one storm system out into areas of the Atlantic is still, again, way off to the east of the Lesser Antilles, but it does show the possibility of making its way up to the north of the Hispaniola, Puerto Rico area, and then making its way very close, curving very close to Florida and the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and that's over several days away. So the good news on this is that we're not seeing a major threat from this storm that might be developing out that direction. So this is something, again, that we will be keeping a very close eye on. If you have any travel plans to Florida, the Bahamas, or the East Coast, this is one of the things you're really going to have to take a look at. So please keep that in mind out there. That next disturbance into and around, again, the Bahamas, 
Does not really look like much at this time. 10% chance of anything developing out of that. But we will again be watching this with a lot of particular interest to see what goes on. Uh, Franklin, now the first hurricane of the season. That's one. So long way to go. We'll see how well that goes over the course of the next couple of days and how that goes in just a little while. Make certain you vote for Mr. Todd Demers in the Best of Memphis poll from the Memphis Flyer, the News Channel 3 uh, candidate for uh, best weathercaster. You can vote for him again at the memphisflyer.com and the best of Memphis poll will be going on for the next few weeks. Glenn Carver and Mike Sadie for sportscaster on there and Markova Reed for best uh, newscaster. So make certain you vote for all those News Channel 3 personalities uh, and thank you very much on that. International Space Station just flew overhead a few minutes ago. We also have another flight, a two for one tonight, something we don't often see on here. Give me a second to get this website up for just a moment as we take a look at this. Uh, this one will be much brighter, but it's going to be a very, very short pass. You're going to be looking back toward the northwest, just below the Big Dipper and the horizon at just about 12 minutes past 10 o'clock tonight. International Space Station will be rising in the northwest. It'll be coming up from the horizon, and you look right below the Big Dipper, and you should be able to see this. But at right about the same time, it really starts getting bright, and that you can see it getting over the horizon. That's about the time that it hits Earth's shadow, and whoosh, it'll be gone just like that. So this will be a neat sight to be able to see a uh, two-for-one out there. Don't often get stuff like this, so hopefully you've got a clear view of the horizon. But with the Big Dipper out there in the north western skies, pardon me, northwestern skies, that's where you want to look for the International Space Station. Again, very quick pass, good opportunity to see that and more of it. The Perseid meteor shower will be peaking over the next few days, and this is going to be a great opportunity again to see more about what this looks like out there. If you've never had a chance to see this, uh, should be good meteor viewing conditions at least for the next night or two hopefully not too many clouds out there. The full moon will be very bright, so that'll drown out some of the meteors, especially after midnight, but good opportunity to go out and see if you can catch some meteors out there. If it's clear enough in the morning, you might actually see some more than what you see on uh, the usual side of things out that direction. Now, this uh, hit and has pretty much started to make the rounds. Once again, this is pretty well on par with the whole Mars will be as big as the full moon, the email rumor, whatever you want to call it, got started several years ago. Mars was never going to be as big as the full moon. It was going to be as bright as the full moon. Somebody got those two things mixed up, maybe accidentally, maybe deliberately. The world may never know. The main thing is that that turned out not to be true. It was misinformation, should never have been passed along. Need to take a look at that with a kind of a give it a cast a cold eye on things to see what goes on. This has now started to make the rounds out there saying that uh, it, coming up after the eclipse somewhere around uh, early September or so that the end of the world is coming because there's a rogue planet called Nibiru or Planet X and it's going to be smacking into planet Earth and the eclipse is one of the signs of those things. Uh, this is again for this is not going to be happening at this time. There's no way that, again, the entire world body of astronomers and scientists seeing something the size of a planet or even a small moon rolling its way through the near solar system area would be able to keep something like this secret. It's just not possible. There is nothing like this that is going to be expected to be happening of an astronomical note on this, and the eclipse does not mean it is going to be happening. So if you'd like to know more about this, I've posted more details as uh, for, uh, for your inspection so you can take a look at it. Coincidentally, nice little science quote from Jules Verne at the top of the page, and you can learn a little bit more about what to look for out there, as well as all kinds of other neat and interesting information out of the direction. I've included the link uh, to the Memphis poll from the Memphis Flyer. If you'd like to vote for our News Channel 3 uh, staff, we'd love to have you uh, cast your ballot on that. More information about the earthquake that just happened today. Did you feel it? Let the scientists at USGS know about it. They would love to know more about your uh, citizen science report. Today is National Book Lovers Day. If you love books, if you love reading, if you're a bibliophile 
like I am, then this might be the place to go to. If you want to learn more about science, space, aerodynamics, all kinds of neat stuff like that, NASA has a free ebook section that is really, really cool. So you can check that out as well. Links again to the supposed uh, moon or planetoid or whatever it is supposedly crashing into our planet on September 23rd. Again, not expecting anything like that to be going on at this time. And a great view from uh, Jonathan Dancy, uh, Quitman County, Mississippi Emergency Management Agency, if I'm not mistaken, snapped a picture of a funnel cloud today in and around Quitman County. Uh, great snapshot there, and that was forwarded along to the National Weather Service. Scroll down, you can see more about that uh, on my Facebook page as well. You get more details as well on my Twitter account. Tons of information available here, and all you have to do is go to aonic underscore WREG3. And again, would love to have you along for the ride on that. Also on Instagram, aonic no underscore necessary WREG3. And also on SoundCloud and on a whole bunch of other uh, places as well, if you'd like to take a look at that. One more look at radar real quick and show you that again we don't have much of anything going on at this time outside of a few scattered showers over parts of southwest Tennessee there's just really not that much Bethel Springs back up toward Finger and south of Henderson picking up a bit of a shower but beyond that we just uh, do not have much of anything else going on just yet and probably not going to be seeing too much anytime soon more chances of showers and thunderstorms possible into tomorrow but really not that much happening as of right now don't forget about my complete forecast tomorrow morning bright and early on news channel threes uh just forecast available on am 730 yahoo sports radio with talk back live with bob and josh you can also look listen online if i'm not mistaken at talkbacklivenetwork.org you can find out more again by going to my facebook page and tons of information available there also at wreg.com you can get our forecast you can also get again our interactive radar page here at wreg.com slash weather for more information there questions concerns comments ideas something you would like to see on here please let me know about it uh, we'd love to be able to feature it but we can't do it unless you tell us about it austin.onic at wreg.com and we'd love to have you along for the ride so please let us know what's on your mind and how we can get things uh, improved on here so you come back for the latest uh, weather information live and direct from house onic in memphis i'm meteorologist austin onic stay tuned for more with news channel three and stay tuned for more on news channel three with todd demers bright and early tomorrow morning with news channel three daybreak thanks for joining us.